Hi everybody and welcome to the Grenade Creations podcast. This is episode 42 and if you haven't already seen the movement I do have a wee friend that wants my attention but this is the only time I can podcast so it's going to be a bit of trying to do this where of socks is determined to get pets and scratches. But yes, this is the Grenade Creations podcast. This is episode 42. I think I said 41 just a second ago. It's actually 42. I'm coming to you from the west coast of Scotland, United Kingdom. And today is Sunday the 18th of November. And if I don't move Soxy, he's going to rub against my laptop, which means it's going to move. So for anyone that just loves seeing my big guy, this is Socks. He's purring. Don't know if you can hear it. Um, so yeah, let's actually get on with the podcast, shall we, and not get interrupted by Soxy. Yes, so episode 42. And my name is Kirsty, if I didn't say that earlier. And this is a knitting and crochet podcast. There is also normally some sewing or some spinning involved as well. Uh, there's no longer any yarn dyeing. I uh, have given that up. So yeah, let's jump in, shall we? So first thing is some finished objects or partially finished objects. So the first one still needs blocked and it still needs its ends woven in. But this is the zigzag cowl that was designed by my friend Jen. And the yarn is one of my hand dye yarns. Uh, there is some of this still available in my Etsy shop actually. It's on the, it's truly teal in the BFL base. And it's lovely. I need to block it to just give it a wee bit, a wee bit of stretch. <laughs> oh, you can just see socks with head. Um, so yeah, I just need to block it, give it a wee bit more stretch, a wee bit more growth um, and also just to tidy up the ends because you can see like this, this ends folding over. So once I've blocked it, I will sew in the ends and then it is good to go. I don't know if I'm going to keep it for myself or whether I'm going to pop it into my gifts box. Because I do have a lot of scarves and stuff um, and cowls, so I don't know. You can only wear so many at a time before it's like wearing a lava like costume. A socks just no socks. That's not cool. Okay, so that's the first finished object. And again, for anyone curious, that is the zigzag cowl. Uh, by G my friend Jen. I will put all the details down below and the link to the Ravelry uh, pattern page where you can go and buy the pattern. She also has like a zigzag shawl or scarf as well but I only test knitted the zigzag cowl. And then my other finished object is also a pattern by my friend. I've yet to sew this together but I'm going to block it first and then sew it all together. So this is the Serena Capelet by Rosie Purnell, which is Rosie of Pixel Atlantis. And I get a close up of these beautiful lacework eyelets. So you can see how stunning this is. And this is in um, Rosie's yarn as well. This is Lime Sorbet. And I got both the pattern and the yarn at Perth Festival of Yarn this year. I do love this pattern. Um, but it took me a while to work on it because I was constantly getting a wee bit confused as to which row I was on when I got to this lace section and I thought I was doing really well reading my yarn, reading like my work and then it got to a section where that decided it was quite obvious that I couldn't read my yarn, I couldn't read my work 
and I done the wrong stitch a couple of times and then once I got past the midway point I finally discovered like how I was meant to be reading my work and I haven't made that mistake since. So that was quite interesting. So this just needs a really good block because the ends are curling in as you can see just here and it just needs a good stretch to open up that lace and again with this one I will pop the link in the description box below for the pattern on Ravelry. Can everyone else see his ears? He's just sitting there looking at me going pet me, pet me. I don't know if any long-term viewers are a fan of socks or not but he hasn't made an appearance on the podcast in a while so I'm not going to pop him outside whilst I finish recording. So yes, this just needs a really good block and then it needs uh, two sides, this side and the opposite side woven together and then I can wear it. Again, also not 100% sure if I'm going to keep it for myself or pop it in the gift pile because this has actually been admired a lot and when I've shown people the finished pictures they're like, wow that's gorgeous. So I don't know. Depending on who it is, they might be worthy enough for this. But yeah, I think it's beautiful. I think it's a lovely colour. And it was a lovely knit as well. So those are my only two finished objects. I haven't actually been knitting a whole bunch. But at the same point, I feel like I have knitted as much as I could. I don't know if that makes sense, it probably doesn't. I don't know how well his purring is picking up on the microphone so my apologies if you can hear that in the background. Some people think cat purrs are cute, some people don't. So yes, where to start? My crochet blanket has not seen any love on it, if anything maybe a round or two and that's it. So there's no point showing that, but it is being held in one of my sewn bags. I love this. I love the Ninja Turtles. I think they're brilliant. Okay, so my next project is being held in a bag that my friend Jen made, the lady that uh, wrote the zigzag cowl pattern. She gave me this when I was over in America and we met up and I love this bag. I've, I tend to roll it down two or three times and then I just work with my project. So I am working on a sock pattern. Well, I say sock pattern. I'm just working on a vanilla sock. And I am using Heart and Soul Sport Socks. Um. I like the yarn, don't get me wrong, but I get a heck a lot of a lot, my voice is going, <clears throat> I get a heck of a lot of, um, bleeding is not the right word because bleeding is more when you're washing it, but I'm getting a lot of transfer off the black dye onto my fingers when I'm knitting. So we just pop the sock on the sock's head. <laughs> I don't think he liked that very much, but he's not moving either. No hands! Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm getting a lot of transfer um, of the black dye when I'm knitting. And the way I'm knitting, I get it transferred here because of the way I knit. And then on these two fingers, and then just a wee bit on these ones because I knit a wee bit funny when I'm working with the 9 inch, nine inch circulars. I... You done? I tend to tuck this finger in like that and then work like that and because of that I get transfer just there and then I also get transfer on my fingers for holding the needles and then I get transfer on these fingers 
for holding the yarn. So it's putting me off working on it, I'm not going to lie, because if you don't go and instantly wash your hands afterwards and then you end up doing something, it you just look dirty. When you're not, you just have bad dyed socks. So I'm a wee bit put off and I'm hoping that when I do block them or and wash them, that when all the excess dye comes out, it's not going to then just jump into the orange and uh, the yellow because I'm a wee bit worried that it will muddy the sock. Um, and there's already a wee bit of kind of like muddying going on. Like, so see this row here. Just a wee bit of muddying. But I think that's literally just how it was dyed. I don't think it's transfer. So one difference about this sock from my other socks is I've made this I've made the leg a lot longer than I normally would. So normally I would kind of have my leg start about here. So that's a good two inches extra. And the reason I've done that is because we are going into winter and last winter in the in the UK and Scotland in general we had a lot of bad weather, we had a lot of snow come March time and I didn't have suitable socks to wear in my Doc Martens. Soxy, you're moving my laptop. Sorry about that folks. So yeah, I didn't have suitable socks for wearing in winter time um, in my Doc Martens and they just weren't long enough and I kept felt like they were slipping down and I couldn't reach down enough to pull them back up. So I wanted to make a longer leg and that was fine. It was just a wee bit of mindless knitting. I started it when I had an appointment at the hospital and then the only thing about being a longer leg is I felt like I also then made my, my um, heel flap a wee bit longer than I normally would which then meant I had more stitches in the gusset, which meant the gusset decreases took even longer and it just feels like a very long project because I've made a longer sock. Cash 22 and all that jazz. I could have put in an afterthought heel, but I've bitten... I've bitten, that's maybe not the right way to start that. I think I've just accepted there we go that's better i've accepted the fact that a heel flap and gusset fits my foot a lot better than the afterthought heel or the fish lips kiss heel <coughs> excuse me no tea today folks just good old iron brew so yeah, um, put off by the yarn, kind of annoyed that by now I'm probably finished my sock. You can't, you win some, you lose some, and sometimes, socks -y. For anyone that's a new viewer, socks drools, and socks shakes, said drool. Like a dog, after it's been in water. Um, so yeah, normally I'm finished my sock about now, or just getting to the toe. And it's it's putting me off using black yarn. But I know not all I know not all black yarn um will bleed. You away? You gonna say goodbye to the podcast? What are you doing? Are you just gonna throw your tail up in the air? Are you protesting? What you doing? I may or may not cut this out of the podcast. Okay, okay, you know what? Oh, there we go. So the black yarn is putting me off a wee bit. And okay, okay, geez. Forgive me for thinking you wanted attention. Where are you going? Where are you going? What are you doing? You mean you don't know? So yes, uh, this is yarn I got in a yarn shop in Blackpool 
Uh, unfortunately, that shop is no longer there. The owners did close up. It was Vivian West Wolves. I love the name of that shop. I thought it was brilliant. Uh, but the owners uh, up and moved. And I don't think they've reopened to where they moved to. So it's a good memory yarn from my holiday. And I do like the colours as well. I've got to admit, I do like the colours. So yeah, that's that one. And this is normally put in my work bag so that on my lunch breaks and if I'm not doing overtime in the morning, I have something mindless to work on. I decided that I had had to cast on some colour work because what was happening was I decided I needed to go through my whips and pick up and finish languishing whips. So that was the zigzag cowl. It was the shawl I showed on the last podcast. And there was something else. There was two jumpers, which I haven't touched. I hold my hands up, guys. I have not touched those two jumpers. And I think it was just then my crochet blanket, which gets picked up as and when I see fit to do crochet. And also because it's getting a big project now, so I feel like taking it to work is a bit harder because my work is like a furnace. I don't know how badly this laptop's moving and if it's going to be really annoying. Apologies if you get motion sickness. So yeah, the crochet blanket just seems a wee bit too big to take into my work to work on because it literally is a lap blanket and my work is too warm to begin with, never mind having a blanket over me. So it stays in the house and and or comes to my other half's house when I go there at the weekends. So yeah, I decided that I needed something interesting, I needed something fun and for me that fun had to be colour work and I really do mean had to be colour work. I was on a virtual knit night with some friends and I was just like guys I have to cast on some colour work you need to give me pattern suggestions. So bless them they were all dropping suggestions left right and centre for different things and I didn't take any of them up on any of their suggestions and instead I went through some of my like old magazines and patterns that I already had and I found Shetland Wool Week Volume 3. Is it Volume 3? Yeah, Volume 3. So I'd had this in my <clears throat> magazine slash pattern stash for a while and decided that there was a lot of good colour work projects in these magazines. So I had a flick through and I was like, right, okay, I'll start small, I'll get back into colour work, I'll start getting my floats really, really good. And I found, that's when needles fall out because they're keeping my place. And I apologise if I butcher the name of this, the Tavir Fingerless Mittens. So well, it helps if I don't cover up with my hand. So that's them there. Well, fingerless gloves. And these are by Ella Gordon. And it says here, for somewhere with so few trees, you often see them in shit with knitwork, knitwear usually adorning a yoke, but I decided to take the motif and use it on a pair of fingerless gloves. They are knit with an afterthought thumb using bright shades inspired by Autumn and Shetland. So these are knit. The sample in the magazine is knit out of Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weights. And it's done on 2.5 millimeter millimeter DPNs and 3 millimeter DPNs. And I actually ended up working with the same yarn that is suggested. 
in the magazine because I went stash diving. So this is a part of the FPGC D stash, which I'll talk a wee bit more about in a second. And I went with the Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight yarn. I think this is the first time that I have actually, well, no. Okay, it's one of the rare times I have used the yarn that is suggested or used in the pattern. I normally always substitute. So I am doing mine in four different colours. And I only have three ball bands. Because that's how my life goes when I'm trying to talk about it. Oh, no, here's the fourth one. So I'm doing it in shade 20, shade FC51 mix, shade 132 and shade 1A. And this is what they look like so far. Now these are probably not everyone's colour choice and I guess I maybe put them in the wrong order. I'm not displeased with them, but I think I could have made them a wee bit better. But this is them so far. Wow, she look great on the camera. So if I was to go back and change anything, and I did this for a reason, I would do the cuff in the blue, the first part of the trees in the dark purple, the second part here in this purple, and then you go back to the dark purple and then you do the top of the fingerless gloves. So I only have one ball of the blue and it calls for two uh, because you're going to be doing your cuff and your thumb and your fingerless sections. So I didn't have enough for that. But looking forward at it, I'm probably not going to do the individual fingerless fingers. I'm probably just going to do an all round fingerless cuff, shall we put it. So I probably could have got away with just using the blue. But I like the stark contrast. I'm not going to lie, I do like it. And the pattern is a lot more subtle. So I don't know, maybe that's what's kind of catching my eyes because I know that it's subtle in the original design and really quite stark in my version. So I'm liking it so far. I know this type of wool isn't for everybody. It's seen as quite rough and rustic. I'm not going to use the word rustic. Um, It's got it's not for everyone, put it this way. I couldn't wear this around my neck. It's just too scratchy. And I hate to use that word because some people get so so annoyed with it, but it is. For me, at my neck, it is scratchy. But on my hands, it's absolutely fine. So these are going to be for me. And then I'm probably going to make another couple of pairs for other people because it's such an enjoyable knit. It really is. And... All the people that had suggested patterns to me, bless them, when I showed them, they're like, oh, what did you pick? And I was just like, not one of your suggestions, I'm sorry. So they all seem to really like what I have picked, mind you, and everyone's saying that they're really, really cute, a really, really cute design. So I'm glad I ended up going, like, pattern diving for it. And Soxie now wants out the room. I'll be back. Soxie has now left the room. So, what was I saying? The pattern calls for a 2 by one rib. Knit 2, purl 1. And it turns out, I like the reverse of that a lot better. So, knit 1, purl 2. I think it's got a much nicer look to it. Uh, compared to my knit 2, purl 1. I think my first knit looks fine and my second knit looks really sloppy. And I don't know if that will be because I then had to purl and my tension will have changed between my knit and my purl stitch. But my first knit stitch looks bang on and my second knit stitch just looks really, really sloppy. 
and then when I turn it over I just think it's so much neater it's so much nicer and if anything to make that look even nicer I'd probably have done the knit stitch in the back so knit through the back loop and I think if I make another pair I will do it that way I'm not going to do it the pattern says I'm going to do knit one through the back loop purl two because I just think that would be so so neat and it would look so good on a pair of mittens and I really want to get these finished to see how they look see what their fit is because I am a wee bit worried about the fit uh, I don't know how well that's going to come across I think it'll be okay on me I think if I was to make this for anyone else it might be a wee bit too loose and I can't show you my floats very well because I know how, every, how much everyone loves to see floats which I don't particularly understand so that's on that side and they look a bit messy on that side so I started with a smaller colour work project just to ease me back into trying to get the floats right and my tension and everything else and I am loving it I completely have fallen back into the colour work hole and I just want to make everything colour work I love it so yes uh, all my colours held together I have two of the purple but these are my colours held together uh, this is not showing up as bright as it would in real life but everything else seems a wee bit true seems true to colour uh, so I had a picture I took a picture so that I could see which of the shades was which um, I know the 1A is the white and everything else I would need to refer back to the picture so I knew which one was which colour but that's the only way I could remember because the ball bands were just falling off anyway so I decided to take a picture with the ball bands still on so that I knew which ball was which shade in case I needed reference for later on so yeah highly recommend the pattern if you can get your hands on it or if you can just get your hands on volume 3 of Shetland Will Week anyway because there are so many amazing projects in here uh like one of my next cast ons will be the booster beanie which is by gudrun johnson which i know a lot have a lot of people have knit already never mind are going to knit and there's some non-color work projects in it as well but there this one has got a lot of beautiful designs and color work projects and just everything in it and there's also just some really good articles like just another another really nice pattern is these ones like I think they look so nice and stunning and simple and just like those these wee eyelets and then even the the variation in the stripes and stuff I just think they're really really nice they'd make a really good gift for somebody um cabled hat as well and some really good um, articles I knew I'd get there so yeah highly recommend the Shetland Will Week annuals so yeah so let me pop all these back in their project bag and I took a picture of me working on these the other night and I was watching my I would like to class her as a friend but I don't know if she classes me as a friend but I was watching Liz of the Just One In podcast who when she was in Scotland we took her to a very traditional Scottish pub uh, and we had a really good laugh uh, so I took a picture of my project and my project bag and that I was watching her and everyone was going a wee bit crazy for my project bags so this is the adipoise or adipose project bag that I have and I love these wee guys I think they're so cute and then someone slightly ruined it for me so for anyone that's not seen this episode of Doctor Who these are actually little fat globules and what happened was whatever the creatures were from outer, from outer space came and they needed human fat 
to survive and feed off of and whatever. So they marketed these fat loss pills and little adipoids would just plop off of the human and pretty much just walk out the door. I think it was like 1am or something like that. This, these little flat globules would just come to life and they would turn into these adipoids and they would walk out the door. And then from there they went to wherever it was um, to get transported to the people that needed them. And in the episode, they're so stinking cute, like so ridiculously cute. And then someone ruined it for me by saying, you do realise like these fat globules would just come off the person until the person just wore away and died. I was like, they're not so cute now. But they're still adorable on the fabric and you even get like a wee adipoise butt. And they just look so cheery and happy. I mean, how could you not like these wee guys? But anyway, these are, this is one of my project bags. And um, on the inside, it's just got Doctor Who fabric. So that is my only colour work project on the go. And I say that because I have a Sunset Highway sweater and a Humulus sweater. My Humulus sweater is past the point of colour work. And I think I'm past the point of colour work on my Sunset Highway because I'm, I'm on the sleeves. And I think I'm just past that wee bit of colour work where they've got it about here on the arm. So it's my own colour work project. And then I am in my lovely snowman bag, or as my other half calls it, the Iron Brew snowman bag. If you're Scottish, you might get that reference. Um, but yeah, this is the snowman. And in here is actually a test knit for the lovely and the very talented Rachel of the Crafty Historian podcast. I am allowed to show this off because she's got some hashtags for on Instagram. And this is my progress so far. This is the Sock Set Shawl Lit. I say it that way because I will get awfully tongue twisted and I will probably mess it up if I don't say it that way. So this is a Sock Set Shawl Lit. <laughs> and I have no idea where the tag is for the main colour of my yarn. That was smart. But I'll show it off anyway. So this is the main colour. And this was a yarn I picked up in America when Jen and I went to a wee fibre event. I can't really rem I can't remember what they called it. Uh, but it was a wee yarn event that I went to when I met up with Jen. And it was awesome. It was a great event. I loved it. It was tiny, but I still loved it. And I still spent a little bit too much money. And this was one of the yarns I got. And I wish for the life of me I knew where I put the tag. I'm going to go see if I can find it. That didn't take as long as I thought it would. So this yarn is by Olive and To You. It is the, they've put it as luxury hand dyed yarns and fibre craft accessories. And it is a little pistachio in their pole base, which is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 4 ply, and there is 435 yards. Not sure what that is in metres, but this is it. And it's stunning. And it's probably the most I've spent on yarn because it's $34.50, which I think works out to about £28. The same on the day, I didn't care. And see, today I don't care. Because it's money that I've already spent and it's bringing me joy. Because it's so ridiculously soft. So here's the card for you. It's not really focusing, is it? I'll leave the details down, the, down in the description box. But it's Olive and To You. And two as in T-W-O, the number. And the website they've got is www.olive2u.com. So yeah. And the pop of colour here, this lovely kind of almost fluorescent purpley pink. 
Wow, that's blowing out of my camera. This is my Maminets and it's in the Parachute Pants colourway, which I love the name of. And I got this at Edinburgh. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Correction. I got this at Perth Festival of, of, Perth Festival of Yarn this year. I actually got quite a few mini skeins from Sunshine this year and they are all very bright. Very, very bright. And I love them. I think this is part of our UV collection, so that's going to be really interesting. Not that I ever go anywhere near UV lights. Um, I'm out of the clubbing season. <laughs> I haven't gone to a club in a while. And I don't really know where else there's going to have a UV light. I don't know. But yeah. I thought these two would go really well together because they are like pops, excuse me, pops of kind of like blues and pinks and reds and some purple in there and I just thought the two would go really well together. So yeah this is a test knit for Rachel and if you haven't heard of Rachel go watch her podcast because it is amazing. I could listen to her accent all day long and she is based in York, well she's She's currently in York studying. I don't know if she was originally from York or not, but I went to York when I was a kid and I fell in love with the city. It's just absolutely stunning. I would love to go back and if I would, I would just kind of go and pester Rachel and maybe have a cup of tea if she would like to hang out or something uh, because she's lovely. I actually love watching her podcast. So yeah, this project is actually making me really enjoy a shawl and that's that's something for me to be honest i can go off shawls very very quickly because of the amount of stitches at the end of the project and in this one there's less than 300 when you finish which i think is pretty good so i'm not put off by that prospect um and it's also a very, I don't know how to describe the shape of this one, but you can see like, I don't really have to do much to get this to lie out like this. So what is that, a half pie? Is that how we would describe these? I don't know. I'm not good with shawl designs. I'm not a shawl knitter, but there's these really beautiful um, eyelets as well which is really nice so yeah that is my test knit that I am working on so I'm very eager to keep working on it and see how it grows and the general finished result because that wee pop colour as well just comes back in a few other places along with the eyelets so it's gonna look really really good so yeah <laughs> And that's all the knitting I have to talk about, guys. Um, I don't really know if there's anything else to talk about. Let me have a wee swig of my drink to ponder that over. No, I don't think so. I'm going to be working on cutting some new fabric and I'm going to be working on some making up some new bags. I want to try and make a bigger bag design, uh, kind of like a sweaters quantity. But I also want to work on some drawstring bags because I put out a poll questionnaire, whatever you want to call it, on Instagram. And I asked if anyone wanted to see some drawstring bags in my shop and there was an overwhelming yes and it was only up for 24 hours but out of those 24 hours only one person came back and said no so I think it worked out it's less like oh I can't remember what the percentages were but a high percentage of you would like to see some drawstring bags so I'm going to work on a drawstring bag design and then I also want to make a bigger um, zipped bag for a for a, a sweater or a very large sole. 
So those are on the cards. And I feel like there's some other things. Not sewing related. I just feel like it's now getting very choppy. <laughs> Uh, so the results of the collection giveaway, um, I done the number generator in one of the clips you'll see added on at the end, and it was between there was five comments apparently, but I could only see four, and one person had commented twice, so I took out one comment. So I done between one and three, and it came up with number one, and then of course I did not check to see who that was. And uh, number one is Mary. Oh my god, Mary Denax Murderer. I have you on Instagram, so I will send you a message on Instagram or I will let Anna know your Ravelry handle. And then, I know, I'll talk to Anna and I'll see how she wants to go about this. But well done, Mary. You have won the Cow Election Collection by Anna, and that is Anna of Yarnesty. And the collection is absolutely stunning, but just remember all the patterns haven't been released yet. It is a collection and they are monthly patterns. So congratulations, Mary. I will get in touch with you and I will also get in touch with Anna to see how she wants to get you, get the pattern to you. I feel like I'm babbling now. And I also feel very out of breath. So yes, I realised that I didn't mention this at the start but a huge 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 thank you to everyone that is a new subscriber I partook in partook partake partaken I don't know I took part there we go so much easier I took part in the get your yarn wishes granted and the only thing I asked for I didn't want any yarn I didn't want people to have to pay postage I didn't want anyone to be out of pocket for on on my behalf Sorry, I feel so out of breath. And I didn't want anyone to be out of pocket on my behalf. So the only thing I asked for was for people to give my podcast a try and give it a wee subscribe. And I was overwhelmed by the new amount of subscribers. So thank you so much for swinging by. I hope you like the podcast. And I hope to not see a decrease in subscribers. But for anyone that is new to watching, thank you so much for sticking back, sticking by till the end. And if this is something you're interested in, there is the subscribe button just down below if you wouldn't mind giving that a wee hit. And then of course the whole spiel about the wee bell thing so that you don't miss the announcement when I do put a new podcast out. That's always an option. And you can find me on Instagram on two, two different Instagram accounts. One is my personal account. And one is more orientated to the podcast and my bags. So my personal one is Little Bee Kirsty, all one word. And my podcast slash business one is Grenade underscore creations. I'll put the spelling of that below and I'll put all the handles and everything below as well. And you can also find me on Ravelry as Little Dash B. And there is the podcast group as well. Uh, one other thing I did mention earlier, I feel, again, very choppy. I do apologise, but being out of breath is kind of messing with my head. Um, the FPGC D stash. I mentioned that a wee bit earlier on. So that is the Fiberpunk and the Grenade Creations D stash. This is something that myself and Marcus of Fiberpunk are running. And basically what it is, is you get a point for every 10 grams of yarn used out of your stash. And we would prefer it to be deep stash. So please don't go out and buy stuff and then use that in your D stash. It needs to be in your stash and it has, has to have been in your stash since before July and you get one point for every 10 grams you use. All the rows are in my Ravelry group. I still need to actually go and start tallying up how much I've used and weighing how much is left of my projects so that I can work out how much I've used because I've not been keeping an ongoing tally which is pretty bad of me as I am the host of that. 
Ah, what? <laughs> Let's move on. So yeah, f feel free to jump in there uh, if you've been using up a lot of stash recently. It was running from the 1st of July until the 31st of December. Ra eh, Ryan, that's the guy I work with. Um, Marcus and I will be re uh, giving prizes to the person that um, has used the most stash. And I think there might be some few participation prizes as well, but I will get some clarification on that with Marcus. And yeah, I don't know how often I'm going to be able to podcast in the future couple of months. I've got some stuff going on in the background and my shoulder issue is coming back, sadly, and it looks like I will be having the shoulder surgery at some point which sucks really sucks I was kind of hoping my shoulder would not miraculously heal but I was really hoping the injections like the steroid injections I was receiving would do something to fix it but oh well it's a experience uh, because basically what happens with the surgery is they take out the little bit of bone that sits about here and then they replace it so I'm wondering whether they're going to replace it with like kind of like um, 3D printed something or whether it's going to be like a bit of metal and if it is a bit of metal am I going to set up metal detectors from now on? Which I think is kind of cool. So I'm, I'm looking at the brighter side of things so I don't know if I'm going to be stuck. I don't know whether I'm going to have plastic in me or whether I'm going to have metal in me. But hey, that'll be in the future. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this up now. And then I'm going to go spend a wee bit of time ironing some awesome fabrics, which I will be posting on my Instagram if anyone is remotely curious. And you can always kind of let me know if any of them take your fancy and you want them to be in a bag. Um, but yeah, until next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching the podcast. Feel Please feel free to contact me if you just want a wee chat or something or... If you've got any questions about anything that was on the podcast this week. Until next time. Bye. Random number generator. Otherwise I'm going to forget. You're facing the wrong way. Camera's that way.